We're joined now by Trevor McCriskin, who is uh, a reader of US politics and international studies. Good morning to you, Trevor. Now, I know normally we talk to you about the situation in the United States, don't we? But today it's all about Russia and the United States, one of those nations that's very worried about this alongside us. Yes, absolutely. And, and because the US is the most powerful of those NATO members, the, the uh, treaty organization between various Western and Eastern European countries and the United States and Canada, um, which is obviously uh, came about as a result of the Cold War and the, the superpower struggle between uh, the East and West, between Russia and uh, its allies and, and the United States and, and its allies, that this is something that has been very worrying to the Russians uh, ever since the end of the Soviet Union. And they they fear that the United States is trying well has been expanding. You know, NATO has been expanding. Its its membership has gone into Eastern Europe, and they're very concerned uh, in Moscow about um, being encircled by the US and its allies. And and that's one of the reasons why they see Ukraine as so crucial because it is as, you, as that package suggested a really large country. Um, it goes deep into what was the Soviet Union. It's it's a former Soviet state, um, and Vladimir. Putin yesterday, the Russian president made it very clear that he thinks historically this was a country that was created by the Russians and that quite rightfully they think that uh, if not all of it, at least certain sections of it should be part of Russia. So there's an awful lot at stake here. Um, and the, the the US and its allies uh, in the UK and other parts of, of Europe um, are trying to take as strong a stance as they can to deter uh, Russia from taking further action in Ukraine and, and undertaking a full invasion of that country. Now, we heard a little while ago Sajid Javid saying uh, everybody needs to work together to stop this. Now, one of the things that's been discussed is sanctions. Can you explain what, what kind of shape they're likely to take? Well, yeah, I think I think even before we say anything about sanctions, it's important to point out that one of the reasons that all the talk is about sanctions rather than military intervention is that although the West is taking this this action on the part of Russia very, very seriously, and they don't want the Russians to take over Ukraine. Um, the United States and its allies in NATO are not willing to fight directly with Russia over Ukraine. So they've stated categorically that they won't be sending US troops, UK troops, NATO troops into Ukraine itself to defend it against any further Russian action. So what's being threatened instead is a, a, a very large pattern package of economic sanctions. That means to uh, impose restrictions on the kinds of trade and investment um, and other kind of financial arrangements that there are between Russia and countries in Europe and in other parts of the world that would be very damaging to the Russian economy. And so the, the idea here is that you're trying to deter um, uh, Russian military action through threatening economic consequences for Russia that it would find very painful and that, you know, they, that therefore Putin has to make a calculation as to whether he really wants Ukraine so much that he's willing to risk those sanctions being placed on Russia and suffering the kinds of economic impacts that are likely to come. But, you know, that may not be enough. It may be that his his belief is that because the US and because other Western European countries won't send forces in to fight against Russia and prevent it from taking over Ukraine, that actually Russia can can deal with whatever economic sanctions are placed on it and that he's he's willing, therefore, to take at least the, the section of, of Ukraine that, that already forces have gone into in the last 24 hours, possibly a larger area, if not the whole of the country. Um, and so it, it's the degree to which those, those threatened economic sanctions are really going to hurt Russia um, that all of this is really pivoting around at the moment. How, how much can the West deter uh, further Russian action just by threatening its economy rather than perhaps, you know, making stronger assertions about what kind of military consequences there might be if, if Russia goes further. So if those sanctions don't work and Russia does go further, what, what happens next? Do we just sit back and say, well, sorry, it didn't work? Well, it is it is a very very difficult situation. I think I think that um, actually Putin understands that the Americans, the British, other members of NATO um, will not risk having war with Russia because that would obviously become 
you know, much more dangerous. It could escalate at, at its worst into a nuclear confrontation. And you would like to think that both sides would do everything they can to avoid that from happening. Um, so there's kind of an understanding, I think, in Moscow that they can push the West here very, very far on Ukraine. Because Ukraine is not a member of NATO, it doesn't have that um, that collective action uh, kind of uh, protection, which other NATO countries do have. Um, but that's where the, the really big risks going forward lie. If, let's say, Russia does uh, decide to invade the whole of Ukraine and take over the country, um, Ukraine borders NATO countries. And so if the Russians were to to then have greater ambitions, maybe to, you know, to go into some of those NATO members, that would trigger actual direct war between Russia and NATO. Um, and so it feels that, you know, Ukraine is kind of stuck in the middle of all of this, very much as a, as a kind of pawn of these larger uh, sort of power relations between the East and the West. Um, but there's there's really very limited action that the US and other NATO members are willing to take to prevent Ukraine from being taken over by, by Russia, at least not direct military intervention. So all they've really got at their disposal are these economic sanctions and also sending in military aid, which is another thing that they've said they will, you know, they have been doing, but they're going to increase the amount of military aid that they give to the Kiev government so it can defend itself. Um, but the, the next stage beyond Ukraine is when we might be in a situation where, where actual war between the two sides, uh, between Russia and America, is, is, is a greater possibility. And I do think, actually, that both sides will, will do everything they can to avoid that situation. Um, but of course, it may not yet come to a full invasion. Uh, of the rest of Ukraine. It might be that these areas, uh, these pro-Russian areas of, of eastern Ukraine that the, the Russian troops have now moved into, that Putin has recognised as independent, that might be the point at which he stops. He may now negotiate a kind of solution to uh, having those, those uh, areas recognised more formally internationally, perhaps for Crimea as well, which Russia took uh, and annexed in 2014 after the Ukrainian revolution that, that put this uh, sort of pro-Western government into place in Ukraine. Um, there may be some negotiations around formalising some of those arrangements and, and coming to agreements on security arrangements for the rest of Ukraine and the relationship with, with Eastern Europe. Um, but it's a big but. It could well be that what we're seeing at the moment is the beginning of a full invasion. Um, and frankly, it doesn't look as though there's an awful lot that the US, the UK and other NATO allies can do to stop that if that is what the intention of Putin is here. We'll keep an eye on things. Thank you so much for explaining it to us, uh, Trevor McCriskin. And hopefully that's just helped to uh, to clear the waters. One thing that has upset us a little bit this morning...